Civil 3D 2012 has made substantial enhancements to managing and to the modifications of alignments and profiles. The new functionality will give the user more control when editing and creating horizontal geometry. This will also help to eliminate redundancy with the need to rework horizontal alignments during the layout and modification process. Let's explore this new alignment editing option by selecting our alignment and editing alignment geometry. Notice when I choose curve 4 here in the table, it highlights in our plan view below. I can also right click and go to zoom 2 and it will center our curve within our window. You also have the ability to choose more than one curve at a time. and You can do this by clicking on your curve, holding your control key down, and clicking on another curve. Notice here in the window below, it highlights both curves for me. Let's go back to our panorama window here for a moment. And notice that all my curves are fixed except for curve 2. Also worth noting, the tangency constraint column used to be labeled constraint 1. Notice that curve 2 has a parameter constraint of radius and it is allowing me to edit my radius and chord length values. I'm going to simply unlock my parameter constraints and choose a pass through constraint and relock. And notice I no longer am able to choose the radius and chord length. You are also able to change tang tangency constraints. And I'm going to do this by choosing the constraint for curve 6 and setting it to constrained by previous and doing the same for curve 7. Notice I cannot choose the constraint next floating for curve 6, and this is because curve 7 is currently constrained by previous as well. Let's go into our alignment properties window for a moment. And on the constraint editing tab, we're going to check always perform implied tangency constraint swapping and simply say OK. And if I go back to my panorama window here, notice now I do have the ability to choose for curve 6 constrained by next. And notice how for curve 7, my element changed to not constrained. and the implied tangency constraint swap happened. The payoff is a significant amount of time that can be saved when edits are needed on alignments that were originally created using methods that resulted in rigid alignment definitions, such as when alignments were created from objects such as polylines. Instead of having to delete and recreate existing alignment entities, tangency constraints can be changed to enable desired editing. In addition, Entity highlighting and zoom to and pan to options make editing and exploring geometry much easier. Now let's look at importing alignments from Land XML. New options have been added to import settings. They are fixed only, floating of first element, and free and floating curve groups. Let's take a closer look. Let's again display our geometry of our alignment in the alignment grid viewer and notice our constraints. And now let's go over to our tool space and export our alignment pine drive using export land XML. And let's call this file Pine Drive Export.
and let's open Civil 3D 2012 What's New Land XML Import. Go ahead and close our panorama. Go into Tool Space and into Settings, and let's explore the Land XML settings here. I want to make sure that our alignment import settings were set to free and floating curve groups, which they are. So I'll simply hit OK. I'm going to import that land XML file we just created. I'm going to choose our alignment and go to our alignment view editor. And notice the original alignment had a floating constraint on the final curve and line elements, and the imported alignment has a free constraint on the final curve element and fixed constraint. Let's go ahead and delete that alignment for a moment here. Go back into our Land XML settings and change that value to fixed only. Hit OK. Let's re import that Land XML file. Select our alignment geometry again. And note the change for our tangency constraints. The payoff is you are maintaining horizontal alignment constraints when enhancing alignment data via Land XML format, which eliminates the challenges related to modifying these alignments in Civil 3D, which has grown more and more important with the increased emphasis on efficient data exchange between other design softwares. Lastly, let's take a look at alignment design checks, which is a new design option that has been added to the alignments, which will enable the user to specify whether tangencies between elements should be checked. If a line curve or spiral is not tangent or connected, a warning symbol will appear in the drawing. Let's demonstrate this by choosing the alignment and going to the alignment properties dialog for a moment. Let's go to the design criteria tab and place a check next to check for tangencies between elements and hit OK. Notice the warnings that appear in my screen. If I go ahead and display my geometry. Notice the warnings that are also listed in the panorama window. I'm going to choose curve 4 here and change that to constrain on both sides free. And notice this forces the start direction to match the direction of the previous element. And it corrects the tangent violations as well. The payoff for this is that alignments with tangency problems between elements are now easily identifiable and fixing the tangencies between elements is made easier with the new alignment constraint swap 